Hey, Adi, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks thank for having me. <laughs> Let's uh, kick it off. Uh, would you like to share some information about your personal background and how Super Tokens got started? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, so um, my, my personal background, I have an undergrad in mechanical engineering. Um, I was th thought I was going to do something to do with cars, but then started getting involved in tech um, while I was a student in college. And that really, like, you know, was pretty fascinating for me. I actually started working when I was in my second year of college with a, with a startup. Um, that was my initial sort of exposure to the space. Um, that startup ended up doing really well. Um, which like meant that I got paid pretty well in my third year of college. And then I actually had a brief stint in venture capital when I came back to India. And then, yeah, that led to eventually me um, starting my own company. <laughs> and um, so how did you, how did you decide to open source super tokens originally? Uh, my co-founder, how, how did it look like early on? Yeah. Yeah. So, so before super tokens, we actually started this other company called Quali. Um, so when I was working at this venture capital firm, like I quit to basically start that company and that company didn't work out. Right. Like basically like we, we were growing well, we got users, but it was like a free consumers company. And like, you know, the monetization wasn't pretty clear. Um, but what, what we ended up doing there is like, we built like some in interesting tech, like m a bunch of different, really interesting things. And one of those things had to do with authentication. Um, and specifically, very specifically to do with something called session management, which is, like this one piece of the puzzle in the overall authentication space. But that piece was not being solved for well at that point in time. Um, you know, it was like a big security vulnerability for even very large companies. And we saw that most like, you know, companies were just not handling that piece of authentication well um, or securely. So, um, so yeah, so we were like, okay, we've got this thing. Let's just write a blog post about it. Like just talk about how it works um, and you'll see how people respond. And then we wrote like two very extensive pieces on session management and what is the flow that we recommend and how we built it out for ourselves. And that blog post actually did really well. You know, it got like, like tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of views. We had people from all over the world reach out. Um, it was like the first piece of content we'd ever written and we were like, okay, fine. Like clearly people think this is, this is interesting. So yeah. So then we were like, okay, let's, let's see what we can do with this. We got into YC with that. And then there was always like, Again, we didn't know too much about like, you know, a lot of these things is like the whole, it was a lot, a lot of it was new for us. So there was always a back and forth debate between open source, closed source, then from moving from session management to an overall authentication play, right? Like not just solving one piece of the puzzle, but the entire puzzle itself. So, um, so yeah, that, that didn't just came through the journey. It wasn't like the first, the first part of it was not, oh, I want to build something open source. It was very much like that came much after the fact. Thanks for sharing. And so was it from day one, Super Tokens uh, open source or it came some months into the project? It was not from day one. Um, it was not from day one, but it was fairly early as well. And uh, since the original blog post, if you could count, how many times have you launched Super Token? <laughs> uh, a couple of times at least, at least two, three, at least three times. Um, yeah, at least three, three times. <laughs> I, I have to say, by the way, both the name and the logo are super memorable. Uh, you know, oh, really? Okay, nice. I, I really think so, you know, at least for me personally. And uh, in terms of early contributors, would you like to share a little bit what that looked like? Yeah. Um. I mean, a lot of, like, even today, a lot of the, like, heavy lifting is still done by the Super Tokens team. Um, but having said that, we have had, like, people who made, like, you know, who bought in at different parts of the journey, which has been really nice. So we once had, like, this really big customer that ended up contributing a big chunk of like, like they had to build a lot for super tokens to work for their use case. Cause it was very early days for us. So we didn't have a lot of the things they needed. Um, we actually didn't even support their tech stack. So they were using C sharp and we didn't even support C sharp. So they actually built the entire C sharp SDK for super tokens, um, and then contributed that. Um, and then, yeah, like we've had different engineers, like who built different, like, you know, who contributed different things, all the, like, we've got contributions from like small things like typos and improvements in docs to all the way to like building full features and, you know, like months of time of engineering effort of someone really good. So, you know, that would be worth like tens of thousands of dollars each. So, so it's like the whole range of contributions. That's, that's really yeah, cool. And, I don't think yeah. I've had this before from a customer getting contribution from a customer. Usually it's users, but that was a company yeah. using a super token. Correct, correct, correct. Yeah, I think we've got like, I think, total, but I, I haven't seen the latest, but I think we have several hundred contributors across all the repos, um, across all the repos now. Yeah. And, and so the decision, you know, vindicated you guys. Uh, it seems like you're happy with it. Of course, there's challenges. So would you like to talk a little bit about, uh, about that, the challenges you're facing as a maintainer? Um, 
as a company as a whole or specifically as far as open source is concerned? Both as an open source company and as a maintainer on the day to day. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think as an open source company, the, the, the thing that you always have to figure that you get right is how do you structure the product in terms of being free as well as being paid, right? You obviously need to make sure that this becomes a good business, but at the same time, you want to stay true to like making sure that you're delivering value to people in the sense that like, you know, if you're a developer, you're building a side app, you should be able to use super tokens for free. And then there should be like a lot of, there should be a lot of use cases, which should be free and they shouldn't have to pay you. Um, but at the same time, you want to be able to make sure that your fortune five, like your largest companies in the world that have billions of dollars can pay you, right. That they're not being able to use the product for free. So getting that balance right is, is always tricky. And obviously you end up giving away more for free than you'd like. Like we have now companies that run super tokens on the scale of millions of users, large companies, um, and they end up doing that for free. Right. Um, so so that's always something you need to make sure you get right. Thanks, thanks for highlighting this. And and I think you guys, I mean, the, the, the pricing philosophy is up there and the pricing is very, very clear. And so, you know, I, I reckon it must be working nicely for you. Um, but but again, that's that's the, the, the point you made. You're absolutely right. Uh, a lot of the people are just using it for free and that sticks to the promise as well. Um, I was, uh, a little while back, I was speaking with Cam from Linen.dev, uh, who I uh, saw so you use Linen for, for your community page. And so Cam told me that Super Tokens is his favorite project, and he pointed out that he likes you guys can do more with less. Uh, and I, I reckon this relates to funding and to hiring. So just very curious to hear uh, your take on this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've been pretty lean throughout. Um, we we've not spent much money. Um, I mean, I would say typically like for an open source dev tool and dev infrastructure company, I think we've raised fairly less and spent very less. I would say that. Again, maybe this is a bit of a bold claim, but I would say that today, like we're widely regarded as like one of the mainstream authentication providers. Like if you see like someone com uh, co like evaluating auth options, we typically get featured in that evaluation. Um, and we've done managed to do that with not much at all um, in terms of like relatively compared to the other people who are who also feature in that list. Um, so yeah. What, um, what do you think were the have been the highest? leverage points uh surely it starts with product but any auxiliary activity you did that helped with that adoption and um i think it was just like oh like like just like the entire culture and philosophy of how we built the company like you know um obviously we worked really hard right so like which means you need less people if you work really hard so um so that's that's one thing um and then i mean also it's not like you know we did everything in three months like we've like a lot of it is done by like a small group of people and we've done it like passionately and, and over time. Right. So it's been a few years since we've been doing this. Right. So we didn't like, you could obviously raise much more money and then do it in three months. Um, but then we think that like, we think the amount of time we've taken is also the right amount because you get to learn a lot as you're developing. Right. So there have been a lot of like really interesting insights that by virtue of doing everything ourselves, we've learned a lot from the market. We've learned a lot from customers, from users. Um, so yeah, so I think, um, I think those two, and then obviously being in India obviously also helps because engineering costs are much, much less than, than in the U S today, uh, what does, uh, the team look like your hiring plans? If you'd like to talk about this a little. Yeah, sure. Um, the team is about, uh, about 15 to 18 people now. Um, um, it's kind of spread out across the world. Like a lot of it in India, like the majority of people in India, but we do have people in Europe and the U S as well. Um, yeah. And I think we always have a couple of positions open. We always are looking for good people. So there are always a couple of positions open. And, and, and people can, can check uh, on your listings. And I also saw that you have an ambassador program, uh, where, you know, you can drop parallels with things other startups are doing. Is, has this been going on for a, for a while? Is there something to note here about it? Your experience? Yeah. Yeah. So we did have this in the start. We actually did this a very long time ago, about a year and a half ago. So that was when it was sort of formal, like, you know, we dedicated resources and everything to it and it did well. Um, but we don't, so, but we don't like, act like we still have a couple of ambassadors, but it's not like an active uh, area of focus for us at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far from everything you've done and a lot of it has been working, is there something that uh, maybe wasn't a smart move or a, or a mistake that you would encourage other people to avoid uh, looking back? From, from a go-to-market point of, like, do you mean from like marketing, like from, from like any mistake or what, from what point Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it goes on all. On all. I mean, I think from a product point of view, I think there are definitely things that we've like, um, like, again, like once you learn more about the market or you learn more about like, you know, how people think you make iterations and improvements and things like that. Right. So, um, like, like the, the cliched examples are like, okay, how do you make sure people get started with your product quickly? Like, how do you make your product easy to use? Right. So 
a lot of iteration there on making the product easier to use, fixing documentation, improving documentation, all of those things. Um, and then the way certain features were architected, again, a lot of iterations on like, we'd architect a specific feature in a particular way, and then that wouldn't take into account certain edge cases or certain types of use cases. And those things only become clear when you get like lots of people using that feature. Mm -hmm. And then and then you start learning, okay, fine. Oh yeah, there are these three more use cases for that same feature that we didn't completely account for. And from the from a go-to-market uh, standpoint, uh, it sounded like a lot of the growth has been inbound you know, by virtue of writing blog yeah. posts and the popularity growing. Has there been at all any outbound on, on your side or it's been all organic and... Yeah, I don't think we've done any outbound since the since the very, very early days that we launched session management. So even before YC, I, I would say basically pre-PMF, like before, like before when we were still trying to get one person to use the product, that time we did outbound, like when we there was literally not even like when we couldn't even name three people using super tokens. Um, that time there was like a lot of outbound, but ever like I would say in the last couple of years, we haven't really done any outbound, 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 like um just like like yeah like you said content seo all of that and then we nurture those leads like once they're already in our funnel once they've already signed up or once they already reach out to us in discord then there's an interaction or an outbound motion where like we reach out to them and talk to them absolutely um is there are there some uh metrics you might like to highlight um um we have we've crossed eight thousand github stars now which is like the public metric you know we've um i think According to Runa Capital, they released this Ross index of fastest growing startups every year, right? So we won the top 20 fastest growing startup open source startups from last year. Um, I, I mean, a lot of our metrics are public. Like you can look at like our NPM downloads. I think we've now crossed 40, 50,000 monthly downloads of our Node SDK. Um, so over 10,000 weekly downloads of our of, on NPM. Um, yeah, I mean, we have, you know, uh, thousands of apps using super tokens today, so. Has, uh, what's your day-to-day uh, -day life like, and has it changed uh, throughout all this time? Day-to-day yeah. um, -day is like very varied um, because as soon as you get good at one thing, obviously, you know, you have to now fix the next thing, right? So, um, so it's very varied, right? Like one day you're working on something else, the next week, the next month you're working on something else. One day it's like, okay, fine, let's do soft 2 compliance. One week it's like, okay, let's fix SEO. Let one week it's like, let's do podcasts. Um, you know, one week it's like hiring. So it's pretty, pretty um varied in terms of like focus, like, you know, areas that you work on. Um, but yeah, I mean, my like on a factual level, my day starts in the morning and then ends when I get go to bed. So um, like, you know, you do all the India time zone work till 8, 9 p.m., 7, 8 p.m. And then typically a lot of customer calls or other things start at night. So I mean, like three to four days a week, I'm on call till at least 11, 12, so. <laughs> and uh, all this variety, I think, in the work is part of the allure, and what makes uh, working on a startup exciting. Uh, so, you know, I, I I agree that's what it looks like. Have you traveled at all recently or been to the U.S.? Uh... Um. Yeah, I mean, I've been to the U.S. Like, I spent a lot of time in the U.S. for Super Tokens for work. Um, I'm actually going to be basically moving there. Um, moving there permanently or spending the majority of this year uh, in the US. So, right. That's, uh, yeah. Be cool. <laughs> and uh, is uh, the team you said is is distributed, no plans to sort of like create something like an office ever or anything soon? Do you ever think about we, A lot. Um, oh. We we do have an office in Mumbai. So, um, but the number of people working in Mumbai is definitely the minority. Like we have like basically both the co-founders are from Mumbai. So there's and our initial hires from day zero, some of them were all in Bombay. So, um, so we do have a office in Bombay and we do have some people working out of that, including me. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I think we are trying to figure out like you know how this scales how moving forward how this grows um you know maybe setting up in india and the u.s office where every right now again we're pretty pretty um spread out even in india like there are people all over the place <clears throat> but maybe at some point we actually coalesce that all into a single location let's say bangalore or something and then similarly you know we we do something in us in san francisco and then those two become the hubs Interesting, interesting. And uh, what would you say are, I mean, surely there's benefits, it's trade-offs, but what went through your mind when it comes to starting that office and maybe a new one uh, surely goes through the minds of most founders, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I still need to do a lot more learning here. Um, obviously, I have my experiences and my opinions, but um, I think that's quite limited uh, based, like, again, I have not, like, 
15, 20 people is a limited data set, right? So again, like, you know, learning a little bit more from much larger companies and companies at different sizes and scales with different setups is something I need to learn before, like I form a concrete opinion. But, but yeah, I mean, I think even from the limited experience I've had, I think there's, there is massive advantages to both to being able to work remotely or being able to work in the office. And obviously um, you want to figure out how to do that uh, in a, in a sensible way, right? Like you want people to be able to interact with each other, like build relationships, have like, you know, unplanned conversation. Cause when we're in the office, there are a lot of unplanned conversations that happen, um, which you don't get to have with people who aren't in the office. So you, you don't want to be missing that out, but at the same time, there's like something to be said about the flexibility. So need to plan, need to figure that out. Totally. Um, in terms of uh, hiring, could you share a little something about the, the process and whether being open source, uh, you know, is, is, is part of it? What does it look like? Like interviewing people and, and those things. Uh, being open source has definitely helped us with hiring, at least like in terms of like a funnel, like a hiring funnel. I think there are a couple of hires we've made or a couple, like a couple of people that have worked in the product that we just, that just would not have been possible if we weren't open source. Like the only reason they reached out or the only reason they applied or the only reason they even contributed is because we were open source. Right. And that's all been very meaningfully advantageous to us. Um, uh, in terms of the process, I mean, it's, it's relatively straightforward, right? Um, like intro call, like resume filtering, intro call, technical evaluation, call like, you know, then general evaluation, like personality evaluation, and then an offer letter, right? So the actual process is, again, we try and make it as quick as possible, um, minimum number of hours involved on your side and as short a time to turn around, right? So if you need an answer in four days, like if the candidate needs an answer within five days from first step from intro call to, to offer letter, we can do that in four days, right? Um, as long as the candidate has time to do the, like, you know, the three rounds, mm -hmm. which is totally again, and we try and keep the total evaluation time to under five hours, right? So, so approximately like keep a low, quick turnaround and a low total time commitment to, to do it. So everyone should be encouraged to, to apply that. And the technical assessment, is it actually, you know, submitting a pull request, solving an open issue? Um, <laughs> um, no, it's, it's like, it's, it's not based on the, um, I mean, sometimes we do take tasks from like real world tasks that we've had to fix at super tokens, like, like some engineer has had to work on something at super token. So we would take that as a task and then ask that on a question on a video call. Um, but like, you know, obviously simplifying it or picking a part of it that can be done in one hour or just like trying to see how that person would think about one particular part of that problem in one and a half hours. Right. But yeah, a lot of like the problems we ask in calls is derived from like things that we've had to work on at super tokens. So it's like, as again, try to simulate the real world work that that person would be doing. Totally. Um, what has been your biggest surprise uh, in open source as a founder? Um, biggest surprise um, in open source. I think it's like fairly unique for each company. Um, I don't think like initially, like you'd say, okay, fine, this this dev tool company or this dev infra company used to work in works in this particular way, um, but it really like across different sectors works very very differently, right? Like, um, like we've seen a customer, for example, like like people really want support, help from us, like they want to pay us for support to implement super tokens for them, right? Like, um, there are a lot of companies that actually do pay us and want to pay us for support services. Whereas we've spoken to another open source company and not as them like much bigger and not a single person has ever paid them for support. Right. Um, so, so like, I think it's like, you know, it's, it's like different things work for different types of companies and, um, and it's not necessary that what, if you see another open source company, they, this business model works for them or some particular, like, so for them self-service, like huge, like way easier than for us, than it is for us. Like certain kinds of companies cannot do self-service with super tokens because auth is just such a core part of the infrastructure, right? So they need to have like these specific questions that even if it's then the docs and all, they just want to talk to someone to talk through it. Absolutely. Like they want to do like an architecture review or something like that. And uh, this, this type of support, is it something that, you know, only the, the team members could, could help with or could a community member, an expert in the community uh, help a customer in this kind of way? Over time, I think definitely a community member could like 100%, but I think the you need to be a little bit bigger and like i guess like a community member needs to be financially incentivized to want to spend that kind of time right like like people do answer each other's questions but to do it on like 
you know, in a deep technic deeply technical way, um, you know, I think is something that needs to have some financial incentives. Mm -hmm. And and do you think there's actually something here in that notion of uh, you know experts in an open source community, expert contributors helping with support contracts for for customers, the project, uh, and facilitating that process? Yep, possibly over long time. And again, I think we and again this like this comes down to like. I mean, you kind of see this already, right? That business model does already work, right? Like you have, let's say Linux, and then you'd have like uh, hundreds of companies that actually provide Linux implementation services, right? Or like um, like Red Hat is an example of a company that provides implementation services for open source products. Um, so I think that business model does exist. And I think it's, that's just a matter of scale. Like if you're big enough, then people will reach out to either you or some affiliated partner for support services. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, you know, note no to self about a potential yeah. avenue for open source contributors to monetize their contribution expertise by maybe uh, helping uh, companies with, uh, with support. That's that's very interesting. Um, is there a next milestone that you might like to, to talk about or uh, just you take it still one, one week at a time? <laughs> um, I think it, I mean, no, I, I mean, there are definitely milestones are definitely things we're working towards um yeah i mean i think we've proven like broad-based adoption right like we've proven so like i said there was a time when we couldn't get three people to use the product right and and i think we've def that's definitely changed like there are like a very large number of people now using super tokens and using it consistently in production so i think we've proven like broad-based adoption broad-based like ability like propensity for people to want to use super tokens I think now it's just like, you know, can you continue to scale? Can you continue to do that? Like, you know, at bigger and bigger scales and with larger and larger companies. So, um, so we've done that with like a certain type of company. Now you want to, you want the product to become even more, um, mature. So you want to go after even larger and larger companies. So I think that's like sort of the next milestone. And th is that where you personally, you know, put a lot of your time, uh, today? Um, yeah. A lot of that is product related, so engineering related. So some of that comes from like once engineering is done. But yeah, personally also, like you know, sales is becoming like a bigger and bigger area of like time for me where I spend my time. Whereas let's say maybe six months ago, one year ago, I was not spending much time on sales. Today I am. Uh, in terms of community management, are there any tips you might like to share? And it could be simple things, but still beneficial to people listening. Um... Um, I mean, just like, super, like people really appreciate like our support and our responsiveness. So even at the scale where like, and again, I have to really thank my co-founder for this, like Rishabh, um, he's like incredibly good with support. Like he is like, most people can't understand like how quickly he does it. So like all, like if people, if someone's on our community and they're asking questions, he's responded in under a minute, like, you know, the rest of the team, like, so even when the rest of the team knows they have to do support. Like by the time they've opened the message, Rishabh has finished like reply, like sending like a five message, five line detailed technical response to this person. And they're like, we just opened the message. Like, you know, so we're like very quick um, support has been like something that people are really appreciate about Super Tokens. Obviously, we may not be able to keep this going at, at an infinite scale, but um, for as long as we can, you know, we, we enjoy doing it. We learn a lot from people. People appreciate it. I think it's a win-win and, and yeah, I think we like... We learn a lot. Like we learn a lot from every question and every interaction. So, thanks for saying that. Uh, is there um, you personally as a founder and maybe a co-founder too in terms of managing your psychology? Because not every day is you know a great yeah. day. Okay. Yeah. Can you say something here? Maybe people struggle. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like it's, That's like, a good it's, it's yeah, it's tough. Like, um, I mean, yeah, I mean. Of course, there have been many days when you wonder, like, why am I doing this? Like, you know, um, should I be doing something else with my life kind of thing? Like, um, but obviously, as as things start working out, obviously, those days become less and less frequent. But obviously, um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's difficult and you just have to have like, there are a lot of different things you can do to deal with it. Like, I mean, there's a lot of advice and diff from different people talking about how to deal with it. Um, talking to other founders who are also struggling always helps. Like, you know, you <clears throat> talk to other people who don't have PMF or who are going through certain problems similar to you, even if you can't learn anything because the problems are very, like the solution is very different for them. You just like knowing that, like having that empathy with different people always helps, like, you know, in any kind of problem you're having in life. Um, but yeah, I mean, otherwise for me, it's just like, you know, it's just like, you just tell yourself to be resilient. Um, you know, you just like, it's a mental, it's a state of mind. Everything is a state of mind. So 
you have the right state of mind and and you manage it. <clears throat> totally. Are, are there people in the open source ecosystem that you particularly look up to or have followed their advice? Um, someone maybe that helped early on? Um, I mean, there have definitely been people who have been helpful in our journey. Um, like, I mean, we've obviously been inspired by some of the companies, some of the larger open source companies that came before us. So when we were deciding like exactly how to build this, like obviously we took reference from Mattermost, GitLab, PostHog, all who are like, you know, sort of before us. Um, and then that definitely helped. And then, yeah, we've always had con like, we've had conversations with a lot of these founders on different things. So, um, so yeah, it's always been helpful. And I, I'm guessing you yourself personally, you know, a lot of founders reach out to you for advice and probably open to all this despite all the time constraints. Yeah, I try my best. I mean, there's like, it's very, very difficult. And there's like, always like, I definitely try my best. Um, Like right after this podcast, I'm doing exactly that. There's like a founder that reached out. So, um, so, so we're speaking, but, but yeah, I mean, I try my best and as many as I can, I do, but it's difficult to do, to do a lot of them. So. <laughs> totally. And in terms of your own personal advice, uh, mm -hmm. something you have in mind you'd like to share with people? Sure, there's a lot of things, but we'll be. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, the difficult, the most difficult thing is like understanding yourself and knowing yourself, right? Like, what is it that you really want and why do you want it and, and all of those things. And you like knowing that, like knowing yourself is, is the most difficult thing, but also the most like powerful thing. Cause once you know it, it also gives you an, an edge and an advantage in being able to be like, to just to, to have conviction in whatever you end up doing so 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 if you can figure out like what who like what drives you that's like an important that's like an important first thing to do when you decide to start a startup which most people do like again the journey helps you figure that out you may not know it on day zero the journey helps you figure it out but again i think a lot of the conversations around the business idea and how do you build a team and how do you build product but i think maybe something that's not often enough spoken about is how do you know that you should like how do you know yourself to figure out whether you should be doing this like that you're made for this or that this is what you actually want like are you doing it for money are you doing it for yourself are you doing it to prove something like why are you doing this and and what do you really want out of it that having that clarity probably helps especially through the tough yeah. times um, exactly especially in that exactly so like it definitely helps um when when things aren't clear in terms of founder relationships, uh, anything that uh, you might like to share there for strengthening the bond or generally for managing? No, I've been very fortunate. Um, again, like I've been very fortunate. Like I think my relationship with Rishab is pretty good. Um, we we think very, very differently, but in some ways we think, so we think very differently about most things. Um, but the thing that really works out for us is is that we both are so invested in just making sure that we get the right solution or that we're, th that we're so focused on making, like there's like zero ego. Like there's there's no ego about, oh, I'm right or you're right. It's completely about like, what is the right answer? So no matter how different we are, like or no matter how different our thinking processes are um, and we have like very strong disagreements, we always only care about what the right answer is. So that inevitably after a couple of discussions you find out okay what are the fundamental differences and assumptions that we're making like what is your assumption that's different from my assumption and then whoever get, like if it's important enough we go test the assumption and then you get a clear answer and then that's the way forward um so i think the the thing that works for us in a founder relationship is just not having ego um on who's right or who's wrong absolutely that's a, that's a highlight right there i agree uh thanks thanks for noting this um Surely a lot of people could attest to the fact that, you know, open source today feels a little different. There's a lot of hype uh, building up. Uh, of course, there might be some, some, uh, it's not for everyone potentially. So people starting up today or you know, going out of college or maybe having their own project and, and seeing all this activity. Um, is there any piece of advice you could tell them? Any word of caution or, you know, encouragement maybe? Um, how would you dissect what's happening today? I think it really depends on, um, like, I wouldn't say just go, like, again, I think this is, you'll see this, this is fairly common advice that don't go and build something just because it's currently in hype, all right? Like, just because it's being hyped currently, like, um, that's, again, probably, it, it may work. A lot of times it does work, like, a, for a lot of people, it does work, but, um, 
but i think you have to see like like open source doesn't work all the time for every use case like you have to pick it's very powerful i would definitely recommend being an open source company but it depends on on the space again it really depends on the space why does open source make more sense than the closed source version um and then or like the exist like and generally also like in our experience like there also has to be other differences beyond just the fact that you're a open source alternative like generally like people also do like okay fine you know like our product is differentiated in this way or our approach is differentiated in this way or like we're building differently for x y and z reasons and we are open source compared to the other one um so like super tokens is fundamentally like the architecture is very different from any other authentication provider open source or closed source so um uh, in 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 addition to the fact that we're open source we're also very like we are very like we have we made very different choices for a lot of different things if you could just say one to three the superpowers of of open source of open source yeah um uh i mean i think self hostability like again you don't need to be open source to be self hostable but like it helps so um, a lot of use cases that closed source saas companies just don't take care of like today you want to deploy on your customers infrastructure you need a solution that you can self host so you know open like using super tokens then allows you to do that right so being open source allows our customers to self host super tokens right which um, like we're more naturally architected to be self hostable so self hosting is like one big thing um yeah i think product like growth or like a grow to market strategy open source is great um yeah i think those two are like powerful hiring of course um but i think you can solve hiring in other ways as well like you can you can create a good hiring funnel in other ways as well you don't necessarily you don't need to be open source to create a good hiring funnel uh how did the name uh, come about super tokens which is really yeah, good okay. you said before yeah <laughs> yeah interesting no thanks um yeah i was just i'm just in the middle, like just about today or tomorrow going to publish like a blog post on on our name and how we acquired our domains but yeah. but uh, but uh but like essentially like again we built a company before this and we spent a lot of time and money on the name and domain so when we started this and that didn't work so when we started this we were like okay we only care about pmf we don't care about anything else so we don't care about the name we don't care about the domain um so we came up with the name in like in literally like in less than an hour and like 30 minutes um and because like the session management solution is all based on tokens right and we we should do secure tokens so we just called it oh super tokens and then and that, that was it <laughs> i love it <laughs> uh any any parting thoughts um you might like to leave people with no um, no i think that's it i just hope people find this useful and and if there's any other questions i'm always happy to answer them and people are feel free to like you know always feel free to reach out sounds 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 great um thank you so much for the opportunity Adi and uh, and you know safe travels when the when the time comes uh, and we will all be following uh, super tokens uh, a journey onwards uh, thanks for the opportunity really appreciate it no like thank you so much for having me i really appreciate being here really enjoy talking to you as well and and yeah and hopefully everyone gets some value out of this and um, yeah and thank you so much